So it turns out the plumbing's very much like in the video or on the uh, website, the uh, builder's website. There's no manifold. It's T, teed off. So it's teed off from 22 millimeter down to 15 millimeter, and from 15 millimeter down to 10 millimeter, and that's how it's plumbed. Of course, your house may be very different. So this room has the failed radiator somewhere between here, those pipes, to these pipes. What's that? that this 15, is 15. So we've gone to 15. So those two tens are radiators. These are obviously radiators. One's going that way. Um, So is it going to be your hall or your toilet? That, because there's nothing else showing here. Yeah. I'd say that could be the toilet, but are we too far forward? Yeah, that could be it then. That could be the toilet. Then, these are done. So we're going to try compressor and go from the bedroom next door and see if we can pressurise and blow the uh, blockage out this way. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's coming through. But no muck. Oh yeah, that come through then. So, the plumber, come heating engineer, has adapted the garden hose. He wants to see if he can flush it back water through here. Because although it did pass air, it could still have debris in the pipes. That's speed it up. Yeah. Every one of those little bits. It's enough to block it. Almost nice and black, which it would be because it's that micro ball. So this one, the heat was coming down this pipe. Yeah. This was getting hot this side, but never got, never flowed out. Right. any pressure on those yep. two upstairs please. Yep. Yeah, when you're doing it Richard, I've been putting my thumb over it mm -hmm. and, that, and releasing it and you're getting all the rubbish come out then. That's coming through now. Oh, I can hear a busy man. You've <laughs> done a good job. Can you turn the heat on for me, please? Yes, sir. Right, the system is up and running. We've had the cleaner that's been used, and now the system's been refilled. And this time MC1 has been put into the system to protect it. So waiting to see if the radiators are running. So radiators at the front of the house all working. 
This radiator seemed to pass, but is now a failure. This radiator is also a failure now. It appeared to work before. This radiator is still a failure, but this floor is new, so that's staying. Right, uh, common to the faults of this side of the house, it's going to be either going through the bathroom floor, but rather than do that, we'll go through the ceiling. We've uh, checked it with the camera and the joists are running that way and we think that this is where we need to go in to find the pipes which are common to the free radiators that are not working at this side of the house. And that's for day four. Right, you would have thought that the pipe work would be in line with the toilet and would have followed the same route at this end. And having checked it, it was not in this area. There's the hole for the light. Reason for these oblong holes is so as we could look with the phone camera to get a better light. And it would seem that this one is in line. Towards where the leak was previously, this would have located the pipes for the upstairs bathroom radiator. Here yeah, I can see the leak. You can also see my repair job. I'm going to have to do the same here. So uh, that was from four or five years ago. Hasn't leaked since. Everything's dry. I'm going to flush through. from the bedroom upstairs. Once again, blocked. So 15 coming in, 10 coming out. I filled the holes. They, they were done to inspect to see where the pipes were. They weren't where we thought they might be because the pipes do not run up to the back of the house like we thought. They stopped short somewhere and the pipe we're looking for we found with this inspection hole which is now filled and here it is. So that was the pipe for the uh, upstairs bathroom and uh, that's working now so it's done the trick. So this gain it was this problem here where it goes from 15 millimeter to 10 millimeter micro bore. Oh dear. Anyway, that's the next job, is to fix this ceiling. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. Right, to fix the ceiling, to fix the ceiling, we're gonna use hardboard. This hardboard is three millimeters thick, and I have some plasterboard. Just sit in here. As you can see, I've used this before, and this is nine and a half millimeters thick. The two together will give us 12 and a half millimeters, which is the standard, standard thickness for the uh, ceiling plasterboard. The plasterboard uh, had water damage and broke. And because it broke, I'm not gonna use this. It, it is horrible anyway and I've used it as a guide. So I made a template out of brown paper. It's lining paper that's used for flooring. It's very handy because it's quite see-through actually. And, you, and it, you can crease it and I made sure that this is the right shape and size to fit the hole in the ceiling. So let's cut out the hardboard. So that's the shape to cut out. Right, that's it, cut out. So let's see if it fits. Right then, yeah, more or less fits. Right, I've cut out the hardboard now use that now as a template to cut out the plasterboard. 
So we have plasterboard, hardboard, sandwiched together, matching, ready for the ceiling. Right, screwed in a couple of battens to allow us to fix up the uh, hardboard and then the plasterboard. Right, screwed in the hardboard. And that's the plasterboard fitted. I was careful to try and make sure that the plasterboard that I fitted is not proud of the existing plasterboard. All right, it's so the first layer. Leave it overnight to dry and then uh, rub it down tomorrow. All right, that's the undercoat done. All the primer, primer undercoat. Next, final coat and then putting everything back. Okay. Yeah. I think that looks pretty good. That's job finished. Right, final coat went on. Great finish. Uh, only hole now is the one for the lights. So job done. And uh, we now can go back to normal and um, enjoy the rest of the summer. <laughs> okay, great.